A lot of physics going on in the pole vault, but particularly interesting is the pole itself, because the pole in pole vaulting is an energy storage device. The pole vault is a wonderful example of the law of conservation of energy. You can convert energy from one form to another, but it will always be conserved. There's a lot of examples of this. If you're riding a bicycle and you use a dynamo to convert your kinetic energy into electricity and into light, you could even use it to charge a battery. Then you have potential chemical energy there and you can use it later to maybe heat something up or things like that. Now, the pole vaulter will build up horizontal speed, running as fast as they can. But of course, what they really want is vertical speed. They want to go up as fast as they can. And they use the pole to convert horizontal speed into vertical speed. But first, they convert their horizontal kinetic energy into potential elastic energy. The pole will start to bend, building up potential energy, and the pole vaulter will lose speed as the pole is bending. And then, by using very, very well-timed technique, they can convert this elastic energy once again into vertical speed going up. Now you could do a little calculation. What if we invented the perfect pole vaulter that could run slightly faster than Usain Bolt, 45 kilometers per hour, and could convert all this horizontal speed into vertical speed using the pole? If you shoot up at 45 kilometers an hour, you will reach a height of eight meters. So that's kind of the theoretical maximum for human pole vaulting. You could maybe do a little extra because your center of gravity is a bit off the ground. You can put it on top of the eight meters. You can also give an extra push at the pole once you're crossing the border there. But eight meters, you could say, is kind of the theoretical maximum. At this point, we are at six meters and 18 centimeters as a world record. So still a bit of margin to go there.